And now, on Prophetic Faith. and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another week's broadcast here at Prophetic Faith. I am Pastor Robbie Barrett, pastor of Excelling Faith Ministries in Tazewell, Virginia. Tonight we are going into part two of volume one of the love series. God is teaching us about what love truly is. And if there was ever a time that you and I need to really know what love is and what it can do and what it's about, it is now. Because we are living in days and times where the world, powered by Satan, is perverting what love actually is. The world is trying to teach you that love is this, it's that, it's, it's this over here. But we want to know what the Word of God says because this is how important this is. God says, I am love. So would you agree with me tonight that we need to know what love truly is? Absolutely. So as we get on into this series, we're learning that that love is actually these things instead of what the world is saying. So tonight, as we continued last or as we spoke of last week, we are dealing with that love is demanding and it requires much. Now, what is the world saying? What is most of the church saying? Love is not demanding. It, it's tolerable. It's this. It's that. But we're going into the Word and we're seeing the truth for ourselves. That this love, this mercy, this grace that God has given you and I, He wants us to do something with it. Amen. Let's get into this message. It's going to bless you and I'll see you at the end of the program. But love demands absolute. How many is interested in getting married and standing before that altar and having your husband or your wife say, I might love you. I might be faithful. Don't require too much of me. Boy, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? <clears throat> you know, it's, it's funny that we, we require this of our spouses, but when God requires this stuff, we don't want to hear it. You need to come to church. Oh, don't tell me that. Amen? You need to do what God has called you to do. Hey, you're not my judge. Love is demanding and it requires much. He said, take up your cross. Go to verse 38 for me, Dave. <clears throat> He said, take up your cross and follow me. He who does not deny himself and take up his cross, which is what? God's agenda. Dying to self. He says, he is not worthy of me. He cannot be my disciple. Oh, I thought love is not demanding. Watch this. God is instructing us that if we truly love Him, we must mold ourselves into the image of Jesus. Amen? <clears throat> now, we say when we, when we love people and when we are tolerable, then that is walking as Jesus walked. Wrong. Jesus made a statement over and over why He was here. He said, I have come to do the will of my Father. I have come to do the will of Him who sent me. 
This is what he would tell people over and over. I have not come to do my own thing. I am not about my own agenda. Boy, you don't want to hear that in church today, do we? We don't want somebody to stand up here and say, it's not about what you want. It's about what God wants. That, that's not favorable today. That's not popular teaching today. We want, we want to do whatever we want and let God bless it. Come on, somebody. But it is written. He said, unless you deny yourself, unless you take up your cross and say, what will you have me to do, Lord? Not my will be done, but your will be done. When we do that, we are truly understanding what the love of God is. Amen? We're truly understanding what love is itself. Now go back to Mark 12.30 again. Well, actually, let me read the Amplified Classic of Matthew so that you can really get this. It says, He who loves and takes more pleasure in his father or his mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves and takes more pleasure in his son or his daughter is not worthy of me. Go to the next verse. It says, And he who does not take up his cross and follow me, listen, cleave steadfastly, conforming wholly to my example in living, if need be, what? And dying also. Now do we get it? So many times we come in here with this attitude, God, what can you do for me? Come on. How can you bless me? So many times, watch this, we want want 100% of God, but we want to give maybe 5% effort back to Him. Love is demanding and requires much. Now go to Mark 12, 30 again. I'm going to break this scripture down to show you what each word means so that you can really understand this. This started in Deuteronomy and then Jesus quoted it again. They, they asked him, they said, what is the fulfillment of the law? What is the sum of the kingdom of God? And he said, it is this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all of your mind and your strength. This is the first commandment. And we know it goes on to say that likewise, when you love your neighbor as yourself, when you do those two commandments, it fulfills all of the law, right? But to do that, we've got to understand what love is. Amen? All right, so let's deal with it. First of all, are you glad that God did not leave it up to us to set the standard of what love is? I am glad because you want to know why? Because we really don't understand what love is. We think we do. But we really don't. Love doesn't demand its own way, we often say. Right? Love lets you do whatever you want, whenever you want to do it, that's it. But God said, if you're going to love me, how many loves God in here this morning? Raise your hand. He said, if you're going to love me, now it's your choice. You don't have to love God. But if you're going to, God says, this is what I demand. I demand that you love me with all of your being. Not some, not a little bit, but all. Number one, the heart. He said, you must love me with how much of your heart? All of your heart. The Greek word there is cardia which where we get cardio, right? <clears throat> this is what that means. The heart is the center of your being. It is you. How many knows the Bible says where your heart is, there's where your treasure is. Where your heart is, whatever your heart is turned towards, that's where you're going to be. 
Amen? How many has ever heard somebody say, well, you know what? Their heart's just not in it. What do they mean when they say that? They're not, they're not putting forth any effort hardly whatsoever, right? So we use that phrase, their heart must not be in it. See, when your heart is in something, you give it everything you have. Somebody say amen today. All right, so it is the center of your being. This is where our desires are produced. Which is exactly what Jesus said. He said, where you're out of your heart comes what? Your treasures. Right? Your desires. This is, and it says right here, it uses this phrase, this is what makes us tick. That's what your heart is. Your heart is what makes you tick. It's what drives you. It's what motivates you to do whatever it is that you do. It is what establishes who we really are. This is why you hear me say all the time that your heart, your spirit is the real you. It is also the part of you that is directly connected to God. That is that intimacy that you have with God. When He says you and I are one, He doesn't mean one in body. He means one in spirit. Amen? How many has ever been in the presence of God? How many has ever been in deep worship? That is when your spirit is having fellowship with God at that moment. It's something intimate, right? It's, that's why Jesus said when you go to pray, don't pray out in public where everybody can see you, right? He says pray in the secret place. Amen? When you pray in the secret place, He said, I will reward you openly. So God says, I want you to love me with all that you truly are. All your heart. I want your desires to revolve around the desires that I have for you. Mm. Number two, He says, you must love the Lord your God with all of your soul. The word soul is soke. Or where we get the word psyche. Now watch this. What is the soul? What is the difference between the spirit and the soul? The heart and the soul. Sometimes it's very hard to tell the difference. But there is a difference. The soul part of you is your human life. How many remembers the scripture where it says, He breathed into them the breath of life, right? In Genesis, when it says He breathed into them the breath of life, He gave you a soul. The soul part of you is the bridge of your spirit and your body. Meaning, your soul is able to touch the spirit part of you, and it's also able to touch this physical realm. How many can think right now? Can you think? Yeah. If I say two plus two, are you thinking? Right? What are you thinking? Eight. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Four. Right? That's the soulless part of you. That's your intellect. The soul part of you is your mind, will, and emotions. So God says, I want you to love me with all of your mind. Let me ask you a question. Does your thoughts revolve around God? Or is He just an afterthought? So many times when we leave here, that's the last time we think about God. So many times we do that. He says, with all of your mind, how often are your thoughts revolving around God? Here's another question. Do you do what you want to do? So it's our mind, will, and emotions, right? Let's, let's deal with wants. Do you do what you want to do, or do you do what God wants you to do? Ladies and gentlemen, it's easy for us to stand up here and say, I love you, Jesus. I just love you, Lord. It's easy to do that. 
But we got to ask ourselves, we got to be real. Do my thoughts revolve around him? Number one, my wants. Do I want what he wants or do I want what I want? Come on. What about emotions? Let's deal with emotions. Are you connected more to sensuality than you are spirituality? What does that mean? When you have sensuality, that means you are governed by what you see, what you feel, your, your physical surroundings. That's what moves you more than your spirituality. As many as be led by the Spirit, they are the, what? Children of God. This is how, listen, I'm not saying these things to be critical. I'm telling you, these are ways to indicate to you, am I really loving God like I should? All right, what about the mind? I thought the soul and the mind is two different things, or the same thing. This word mind is not what you think. This word mind in the Greek means to, when you really love somebody, what is it that you do with them? Or what is it that you want? Not only that, but watch this. <clears throat> How many remembers their first uh, love? Raise your hand. First love. All right, now watch this, watch this. You wanted to find out as much as you possibly could about them. You wanted to know all about them, is that correct? You were just so captivated and intrigued, you wanted to know all you can know about them. What do you like? What's your favorite color? All this other stuff, right? That's what this word means. It means to literally seek out and increase in much knowledge and understanding of that person as you can. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What does the Bible say about that? He says the, the fear of the Lord or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How many verses are in the Bible where it talks about get understanding, get knowledge of who I am, right? There are countless scriptures that are instructing us. Well, see, <clears throat> we don't understand that so many times because we're not loving God like we should or with the amount that we should. See, when we truly love somebody, we want to know everything that we can possibly know about them. So I'm saying to you like this, when we truly love God, we want to increase in knowledge of Him. We want to get more understanding of Him. How do we know that we've lost our first love on this? When we no longer, or let me say it to you like this, when we become content with the amount of knowing that we have of God. Why did he have such a problem with the Pharisees? Oh, they were they were religious, no. All of us have some form of religion. Somebody say amen. That's not that's not the problem he had with the Pharisees. <clears throat> Do you want to know the problem he had with the Pharisees? They were self Righteous. Do you know what self-righteousness means? It means where you say, I, what I have, the amount that I have, is good enough. I don't need any more. See, they had knowledge of God. They understood the Scriptures. Right? They understood many things of God. And they came to the point where they said, what we have is good enough. And they never strived for greater. How many people in the body of Christ today have that self-righteousness? 
Oh, honey, I grew up in church. I know the things of the Spirit. I know what the Bible says. I know how to worship. I know how to pray. Come on, you know how they talk. I know all there is to know about God. Are you kidding me? You will spend eternity learning of God. You have just scratched the surface of who God is. See, when you, let me tell you something. When you truly love God, it's never enough. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's never enough. You want more. Matter of fact, this is, what, this is something that God told me. It's been several months ago. He said, never stop learning. Never stop learning. When you love a certain field, let's just deal with the career for a second. When you love a certain field, what is it that people do? They go and they get a what? A degree, right? If it takes a degree, they go and get a degree, right? But watch this. They don't stop there. They go and they get a what? A master's. And then, if they really want to go, when do, when do they, what do they want to do then? And finally, they get that PhD, right? Always increasing. So God says, you must love me with all of your heart who you really are. You must love me with all of your soul. Which, by the way, here's another interesting thing. The soulless part of you is your personality. That's what makes you you. How many knows that everybody in here has got a totally different personality? Right? God says, I even want you to love me with your personality. I'm, you know, I'm just somebody that just always on the go, always wants to give my best, always wants to give everything I have. Well, God says, good, I want you to do that with your love for me. Give me everything you got. Give me every bit of effort. Give me all of your drive. Then he talks about the mind. He says, I want you to love me with all of your understanding. Seek me out. Seek to know me. And let me tell you something right now. You can't know God up here. You can't know God on the radio. You say, what are you talking about? Today, the body of Christ can barely recognize the presence of God from entertainment. They don't even know the difference. Come on, how many knows you can tell the difference? Praise God. You and I have been bought with a price. The Bible says we are not our own. It is not about what we want to do, what our will is, what our desires are. No, it's about us saying, Lord, we lay down our life for you because you lay down your life for us. Love is demanding and it requires much. <clears throat> now, I know that's not popular today. That's not going to fill out stadiums today. But it is the truth of the gospel. That God, have, have you received the mercies of God? Do you feel the love of God in your life? You, you, I know you're watching this tonight and you're saying, absolutely. I've seen God's grace at work in my life. I've seen His mercy. I've seen His goodness. That is wonderful. Praise God. What are you doing about it? What are you doing with that mercy, with that grace that God has given you? See, one thing that you need to learn about the grace of God is that the grace of God does not empower me to sin. No, no, no. The grace of God empowers me towards His will, His desires, what He longs for in your life. And as you go deeper in the presence of God, and I am a firm believer of spending time, quality time, just you and God in His presence, that's where He becomes real. That's where He becomes more real than anything that you are dealing with in your life, <clears throat> that as you do that, God begins to require things from you. And it's not a, well, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. No, it is a willingness to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Glory to God. He is awesome and He is wonderful. I want to pray for you right now that you would experience the love of God in a way that you never have before. 
that as you get this revelation, it's going to take you to deeper depths and higher heights. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> Lord, I thank you first and foremost for every person that is watching this program tonight. They're not watching by accident, whether it's through television or social media or on the internet. It's not by accident. It's not just a coincidence. It's by divine appointment. You wanted them to hear this word from you because you wanted them to know what love truly is. Father, <clears throat> reveal to them deeper realms of your love, Father. And I praise you right now that as you do this, people is going to be healed, set free. My God, breakthrough is going to come forth. I know this, and it's all because of the power of love. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, listen, I want to take this time to thank you for watching this program, and I want to thank our faith partners. Faith partners, you make this possible. God gives us the vision. He gives us the mandate. But then He sends people to help get the vision done. That's who you are. So I want to thank you for becoming a faith partner, for partnering with this ministry, so that we are able to take this gospel to as many people as can possibly come across it and their life be changed. We've been receiving so many testimonies uh, people just being touched and blessed by these programs, by the podcasts, just many different outlets that we use to get this word out, and you make that possible. And if you are watching tonight and you are not a faith partner, what are you waiting on? Partner with this ministry. Come with us as we go and touch the nations for Jesus Christ. Until then, keep walking by faith. I'll see you right here. Be blessed. If you would like to become a faith partner, please contact us at P.O. Box 264, Tazewell, Virginia 24651. You may also reach us at 276-971-2333. You may also request information at AccelerateFaith.org. Our email for faith partners are faithpartner at AccelerateFaith.org as well. Command the lame to walk. We command it in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar.